Hello and welcome to my show, AMZ TV on YouTube. So if you're watching this, welcome. This is Ameza. And if you're listening on my podcast, uh, this is Ameza on Ameza Live. And I have someone with me, hanging with me today, one of my favorite people in the whole world. He doesn't need any introduction. I mean, come on, his name goes way well, well in front of him, even before... Um, you meet him, everybody knows him. And I'm talking about Richard Eyimufe Evans Damijo. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. That's a, that's a mouthful. It is. It is. I've known those <laughs> names. Actually, you might not remember this, but I do. And because, again, not too long ago, I spoke to this person. And um, I first met you, who actually introduced a Jazz 38 by Tunde Kuboi. And that's oh. a long, long, long oh, yeah. time ago. Yeah. And then yeah. you were Evans. <laughs> and I do remember that. And not too long ago, he was asking me, do you remember that? I'm like, yeah, I do. But we've never really talked about it. I don't think we've ever, you know, mm. you and I have ever talked about it. But anyway, um, wow, it's good to have you. It's good to it's see good, you. It's, and good, have it's you. good to be here. It's oh, good to be here. Enough. Uh, well, okay, from, from my side, um, your movie, your movie, your first movie, yes, was actually but... also my first um, uh, Nollywood movie. That because is... when, when, Nollywood start, when Nollywood started, yeah. I was a bit hesitant right. um, because I was watching for the quality of movies and all that compared to what television shows were like at the time. So yeah. it was yours that was the first that I did. Oh. Flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. <laughs> <laughs> but they... <laughs> I, just thought I, I, I just thought I should, you know. You should, should yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's, I'm, that's, jumping yeah. ahead, I'm jumping ahead of my time. <laughs> no, but it, no, no, but it's it's good because I would probably have asked you that because I remember um, mm -hmm. I remember when I was going after you and people were like, ah, forget uh, Richard. He'll give you an answer. <laughs> no, don't worry. I'm like, okay, we'll see about that. And, um, and yeah, that was a great production, just having me on set. It was, again, you're very iconic, you know, you're good at what you do. Um, there's okay. no question I'm actually going to ask you that you haven't answered. Um, let me do it this way. Yeah. Can you still see me? Yeah. Okay, it. good. So I just rearranged the screen. Um, there's no question I'm actually going to ask you that you've not been asked you know, um, sex symbol. Uh, do you think you're a sex symbol? Not really. I mean, this is the job that I do. Um, I have no, or I have no um, hand in, in how I turned out. Uh, that's, that's all God's grace. Um, and so, yeah, growing up in this business and being told that you're good looking or you're a, you're a sex symbol, it's all things that you know that 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 are attached to your person or your, or your persona, and uh, you, you you deal with it, and and you try to uh, make sure you live uh, beyond and above the expectations uh, from your fans. Uh, I'm very very dedicated to to my audience. I believe that everything that I am today is as a result of the audience that I have, and and so if the if they like to see me in a particular light, especially if it works with my morality and, and my own moral compass, I, 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 I make sure I don't disappoint in that area as well. So I've, I've grown up to uh, care about how I feel physically and how I look physically and, and to try and make sure that I live well. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's a good answer. Um, because again, um, yeah, a lot of you have that aura. It's a blessing, you know, you've got that yes, it, is. it factor, that X factor. So, but one thing I do find, and I can tell you guys this, um, he's a very humble man. You are, and you're grounded because I've been around you. We're friends, even outside, you know, the industry and mm. you're very, you're real. You Thank know, you, you are Thank real. No, seriously. It's not just because I know you. Well, I have come to know you. I mean, at this point, we're like family. But you're real. You're very grounded. You're very down to earth. And I think that's why people gravitate towards you. You know, outside the um, Shegun, Kadiri, and um, I'm trying to remember some of, you know, those, the ones that I 
remember. Uh, well, yeah. I, I, I think being grounded comes from, from my home. My, my mother brought me up to, to be that way. Um, grew up in a family that was a very large family and I had the elder sisters and the elder cousins and mm -hmm. that we all call brothers and sisters. We, mm -hmm. don't, we didn't do cousins where I, where, where I grew up. And so, you know, uh, it's always, Rashad, come here, I'll give you a knock on the head if, <laughs> <laughs> if you think you are way over and above your station, you know, so right. that, that sort of uh, grounded me as well. And then finding Christ uh, in, in, in my journey. Amen. Uh, um, I don't think anybody can come more humble than, than, than that. And so right. if, I'm, if, I'm, if, if my life is, is built around trying to be Christ-like, Right. And I don't have a choice but to be humble. Right. Anyway. Yes. Right. That is so cool. That is cool. And then, of course, people also banter the word living legend. You're, you're oh, larger well, than life. You know that, well, right? I, 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 I am grateful for, for, for that. <laughs> I mean, to be alive and be called a living legend, that's, yeah. that's like much more, way much more than I can. I could have asked for. Um, if somebody told me years ago when we started out that at 59 I would be called the living legend, um, that would be like almost uh, an impossible dream. Um, but hey, um, it's, uh, it's something that I take um, very seriously and, and I'm mm -hmm. grateful for it. I'm thankful right. for that. Right, right, right. Something I'm going to ask you. Um, yes. This is on a very serious, I wanted to quickly get this out of the way. Um, you mm -hmm. and I, um, I don't know if you're aware of, you should be, if you've seen the video, um, participated in the, um, that initiative, um, Nigerian Entertainment Against Rape. So, yes. yes. So I actually, that prompted me to do a video. I did a video just addressing that. And I talked about my experience actually um in my university <laughs> years ago um university of Benin, which you and i um attended and, yes yes and uh, it was a, and it was i yeah i was um i experienced um sexual assault and i talked about it and oh, i've got yeah. different different views different response the reason why I'm asking you this is because you're a father and you have daughters. What mm. is your, what's your take against, you know, about rape and stuff like that? Well, it's a, it's a zero tolerance for me. I mean, I'm, I'm a strong advocate for, for, for anti-rape, um, anything that is, that, that will, you know, eradicate rape from our society. I, I'm all for it. Uh, I've spoken about it. I've spoken against it. Um, I've stood up with people that have gone through it. Um, I sympathize with every woman that has gone through it. As a father, if I, if any of my daughters go, go, goes through that, I, I, I can't imagine mm. uh, what my response will be um, outside of being extremely uh, 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 violent or, or vengeful about that. Uh, and so uh, knowing that and, and, and how much it has destroyed society uh, or how much how many more people are dealing with it on a daily basis it's uh, mm -hmm. something that gives me a lot of concern and i don't think that we can ever do enough mm -hmm. uh, to speak to speak against uh, rape during the pandemic one of the things that came out of the pandemic as well was was uh, the rise in, in rape cases and, and domestic violence and, and gender-based violence which I'm also an advocate for, uh, uh, for I, I speak against that, not just against women alone, but against boys, little boys. Right. Uh, I work with all kinds of organizations that are right. doing uh, good work. I, I, I don't, I, I have a problem with publicizing my, my charity or the, the work that I do behind the scenes. And so um, I still haven't been able to come to terms with me coming out to say, I did this and I did that and I did that. Uh, instead, it is the people that I work with, all the organizations that I work with, that will say, I, leave, I, put, I put that burden on them to be able to say, oh, RMD does this with us, or RMD works for us. But I won't, I won't say, if I'm not running a, a campaign on my page or, or on my social media platforms, I, won't, I, I don't beat my chest as something that I do. But if I have opportunities to speak with people like you, of course, I'll, 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 I'll say, oh, I, I do have credentials in that area. Um, 
both with the EU, with, with the NGOs, uh, as a person um, contributing, you know, uh, time and materials to people, to victims. Um, it, it's, it's just been something that, uh, that what really worries me because it's not on a decline. Right. Um, or, or maybe it is because a lot more people are emboldened and are speaking up, speaking up about it now, and, and, and then social media, everything right now is televised. And so these cases that you, would, you wouldn't have heard of uh, are all being, you know, recorded for, for us and for history, you know, to see. So maybe that, that, that brings it to the fore. But each time I hear about rape, it, it just really saddens me a lot more. Um, and it, it's, it's, look, I mean, as I grew up in Worry, where uh, looking back now, the laws, our laws were, were a bit faulty. Because we had such a male-dominated society, rape was not something that was seen uh, from the point of view of the man as something wrong. It was seen as something that uh, an erring woman deserved, a woman who wasn't decently dressed deserved, a woman who didn't stay at home and found herself uh, at a party deserved, a woman who didn't uh, listen to her parents and found herself in the company of young boys or young men deserved. So you take a thing like that to the police station and you're like, the first thing that you are asked is, what were you doing there in the first place? Why did you go to a party? What did you wear? Why is your bra not, you know, close enough? Why is your neckline so open and all of that? So it, I, looking back now, women were even enablers. Of, <laughs> of, of, yes, we, when I was growing up in Warrior, women were enablers. Of, they still of, are. They, yeah, they, they shamed. There are people that were shamed. Girls, there were women who helped girls to be shamed by, being, by having them raped or gang raped, you know, by, 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 by men. Um, I look back now and I thank God for the mother that raised me because mm -hmm. um, I, I, I have mental pictures of my mom losing, taking off her own wrapper top and, and covering women or covering girls that, that were shamed, you know, um, uh, by, by other women or by men who were gang raped. Um, I, I probably would, would write about this, about some of my experiences when I was younger. Um, you should. About, about rape and all of that, yeah. You should, and and thank you, and that's why I love you. You know, I love you. <laughs> thank you, I love you too. <laughs> yeah. it, it just it, it gives me comfort to hear you know what you're doing, and it will be nice for you to share your experience. And the reason why I'm saying that we need more men to come, you know, talk about this, you know, and and denounce it, you know. And I do know the culture that we've been in, it's not really been, it's like a slippery slope. A lot of men didn't see what we as women see as rape, as rape, you know, so that was the culture. I know it's also starting to change, you know, where yeah. again, with the new generation coming up, you know, um, our girls are being empowered. I have a daughter and mm. it's important that she has a voice. And that's one of the reasons why I actually came out and talked about it. I mean, I graduated in 88, that's a long time ago. And that happened to me in 88. I never talked about it. Some few friends knew, you know, but when I did that thing, you know, the, um, that um, short video, and I just thought, you know what? I, with my visibility and with my platform, I'm going to, so other people, other women, other girls, we owe it to them. You get to a certain stage in your life where you feel accountable for the ones coming up. You know, so I'm like, I'm going to talk about it, you know, and let people see and like, you know what, it doesn't define me, you know, um, I'm still pretty, I'm happy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and yeah, so. <laughs> when, and that, when, when you go through experiences like that, you don't let it depress you. I mean, yes. stuff, mm -hmm. you have to, at some point in your life, you have to elevate. Um, right. Over and over that and, and, and do right. it. And in one thing that you mentioned, you know, just want to quickly say that you would find that women are not the most supportive with things mm. like this, you know, and that's sad. 
<laughs> that really is sad. And, you know, maybe at a later date, we'll talk about that, have you come back on so you can talk more about your experience. But you're the one man. There's been some other guys that have also um, talked about growing up, even what they, their own experience, they didn't know. It takes, to me, it takes a real man to be able to do that. You know, like, oh, you know, I didn't think that was rape because it was, we were egged, you know, you know what I mean? It was like, it was mm. part of, it was part of the culture, but now mm. they know better because again, they've gone on to propagate their own seed, so to speak. They have daughters, so it's totally different. But yeah, yeah, I thought I should just quickly, you know, find out what your stand, I mean, I already know uh, what your stand is. Um, let's go to Hollywood, Hollywood. Let's go to Nollywood, which is, well, we are going to Hollywood. <laughs> um, you have been there from the beginning. I, I remember you way back, even before Ripples. I remember Mira in the Sun. I mean, that- but I was in Mira in the Sun though. I was in, uh, I was in um, way before that, there was um, Sparks, which was uh, Special Protection on the Crime Squad. The first, the very first detective action series on Nigerian television with Dola Divako as the director. Oh, Dola uh, yes. I actually <laughs> remember that. Yes. I actually do. Was, uh, and then before that, there was um, uh, uh, Legacy. Legacy was was uh, a character where I played Larry Soares with uh, chalk up gray hair right in the smack in the middle of my hair. And then before there was ripples, <laughs> you know. So but yeah, you, was, you were not in Mirror in the Sun? No, 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 I wasn't. I was in Mirror in the Sun predated. Uh, it, it was there. Uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't come in uh, uh, on television uh, then, you know, uh, when Mirror in the Sun started. Yes. But of course, everyone remembers you in Ripples. I mean, we yes, all do. And, and of course, Checkmate was like the crowning glory in, in my early days of, of my television life. You know, because by the time Checkmate came and I played Shego Kadi and yeah. I had this thing that I did with my yeah. eyes. And, yeah. You know, it, was, it, was, it was my like, like, like my blowout, you know, right. uh, <clears throat> character. And, you know, Right. Um, God bless. God bless her soul. I'm like, I, was, I know. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, my, I'm such a like my views, you know. Right. Right. Absolutely. I, yeah. I, I remember. So my point is, you've moved. You've been there from this what people call old Nollywood, and now the new Nollywood. Well, before Nollywood was Nollywood, you you know you've been there. So I'm just going to ask you if you make. What is your take on Nollywood? How is Nollywood now, and what's What's your take on it? How, how? Well, for, for, for me, um, it's, we are constantly evolving, which is the whole essence of life, right? You know, time was when, um, when we started out, it was so difficult to, to, to string two, two, two cents or two naira or two, two cobra together. Right. And we depended on friends, on, on relations, yeah. on, on our personal savings on very crude technology to do what we needed to do. But today, um, uh, access to fund is not at the point where we want it, but at least there's a lot more Better. access to fund, funding, uh, people are a lot more aware of, of, of filmmaking. There are younger graduates who, of, of film schools from abroad and, and mixed with the ones at home who have gone through the meal. And so it has, the playing field is a lot more evolved than it was when we started out. The person, the people who drive it now are a lot more than the people who drove it when we started out. Mm -hmm. And for me, it is the, the gradual evolution and, and they are affecting the, the, the entire environment of Africa. Because what has happened is that over the years, Nigeria and its filmmaking culture has given a lot of impetus to every African country without yes. denial, yes. without without any kind of denial. We it's are some like rivals. Yes, yeah. like, yes, yes. You know, uh, yes. Uh, some other French uh, West African countries or French countries had, um, you know, exposure to filmmaking at a different level. We 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 didn't enjoy that kind of colonial heritage in the sense of the words, but we. 
we found our own niche and we, we took digital video, uh, we took video and, and, and went crazy with it. Uh, somebody puts it this way, we, we started doing surgery, bypass heart surgery with forks and knives, <laughs> you know, with what we were doing. Uh, people said it wasn't film, but we stood our grounds and today we are like the second or third or whatever place they put us a filmmaking uh, a nation in the world. And, and yes. to be in the same committee of filmmaking nations like America, India, yes, it is. It is. And, and we are and, global. Yeah. Yeah, some of us are global icons now. We right. Still, we might not get the kind of remunerations that our counterparts have in India and in America. Yeah, but right. we are totally with them. Uh, doing stuff that that has been enabled by technology. Uh, the technology available now is a lot cheaper, you know, and with, with, with tabletop technology now, we can do movies with, with phones, we can do movies that uh, can, can compare with the rest of the world. And so for me, uh, Nollywood has evolved. There's so much more work to be done. Right. Um, we can do with some kind of standardization we can do with some form of sociological backgrounding and, 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 and so that we can find our national pride in the middle of all of this and begin to chart a path where we can create the characters and the heroes and the culture that our children can look upon and latch onto and say, this is, this is what we want. We, we, we need to start to stir the, the feelings of patriotism amongst our people when they watch our films. Uh, go beyond just ha being happy to find our films on Netflix, but to also find the films talking about who we are intrinsically uh, and, and not, not a nation of fraudsters and, and corrupt politicians and, 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 and you know, public servants that do not have an idea what sh they should be doing. So uh, that will come. That's another phase that is, that is going to come. And again, come. that will also come as, as technology begins to also evolve and affect our lives in a way that we never thought it was. I mean, look at us, we're staying at home because of a pandemic, going to church online. Oh we God. are having to sit at home and order yes. our food from supermarkets and, and, and personal shoppers who will go to the market and buy whatever it is that they want to buy and deliver to you at home. And all you need to do is just sift through them and cook your meals, you know, during the pandemic, we used to order vegetables from people who, who were out there and said they had license to go out and buy stuff from farms and all of that. We used to sit at home and buy farm, we still do, farm fresh, cold pressed fruits and all of that. So yeah, uh, technology and everything is affecting our lives and there's going to be a new tribe of, 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 of young people that uh, and innovators that will change Nollywood and, and, and make it... Uh, uh, a thing of national pride in, in another in a few years to come. I, I totally agree with you. And just to piggyback off what you said, uh, Nollywood rivals Bollywood and, no, and Hollywood. And if you think about it, those two, Hollywood and Bollywood, have been there eons of years before even mm -hmm. Nollywood. So we're mm -hmm. doing pretty great. Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. There's, there's plenty of room to, for improvement, and yeah. considering, considering how much we have to work with, you I know, know. Uh, compared to what the other countries yeah. do. Uh, it's so it goes back to what we said earlier on that we perform bypass surgery with <laughs> forks and knives. <laughs> <laughs> and that is so yeah. true. You know, that is so yes. true. We've come far from. Um, Nigerian home videos that was before it was Nollywood to now mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like you said Nollywood is very popular um I was interviewing someone not too long ago and it was like um it was like your background I was actually before I interviewed this person so he went and researched my name he's like I know Nollywood I do know Nollywood I you know and then he had talked about some movies I'm like that made me feel good you know it, it will you know when you think about it's not just it's nice. It's nice to be recognized. It's nice to be appreciated and especially a people, you know, uh, because mm. that's been a lot of hard work put in there. So yeah. um, politics, you went into politics. Well, before, yeah. before politics, one quick question. Mm. Where can I, is, is, is flesh and blood online? Uh, 
artwork and I, I would um, love to see how I looked. Uh, years oh ago. my God. You, <laughs> I know you've seen many videos of you looking the way you looked back then before the gray beard, which is distinguished looking, by the way. I love it. It really looks Thank like, you. well, Thank it's you. RMD Thank after you. all, right? <laughs> um, Flesh and Blood is actually on my channel, um, YouTube. I would, um, right, he just put me on the spot. <laughs> okay. okay. It's on AMZ TV. I actually put it up free. You know, it's there for people to watch. So, oh, okay, cool. Um, right, yeah. So, so um, right, yeah, I'll go, I'll go day. I have I have Both. one and two parts oh, of okay, two. Cool. Yeah, I know you've been wanting to we'll talk about that body. Okay. So okay, um <laughs> but anyway, you went into politics. Yeah, yeah, into government. Into government, politics. yes. Okay, Not well, so what's the difference? The of the word. What's it what's the difference? Well, when you say you went into politics, then it would be like I, I chose to go into politics as a career and then run for elective office, stay there and, and battle it out. No, I had an opportunity to go serve my state uh, for eight years. Um, I yeah. took it on and when it was done, for me, it was an assignment for a time. It was like a secondment for a time. And I went in there, I, was, I started in the first year I started as an advisor on, 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 on culture and talent development and all that. And then I became a commissioner for seven years of, of culture and tourism. So um, for me, it was an assignment that was worth every one minute of my time. Uh, it gave me a chance to see how government functions and, and, and the things that we need to speak about and, and, and look into and see how we can make that work better, which is like cleaning an audience table. <laughs> we need Hercules, not just one Hercules <laughs> yes. uh, okay. to do that. But um, it was an experience that I, I, I it was a mixed bag for me. Um, mm. Sad about a lot of things that I couldn't um, do because you, you will find that the, in some cases, the buck, because it's such a strong, uh, because our political system is such uh, it's so centralized in one figure, such an executive-like figure. Uh, the box stops on the table of the executive. And so uh, mm -hmm. power does not, is not devolved to the point where you can take certain decisions that, um, mm -hmm. that are purely on your, your own. So it, it's, you, you can contribute to the, to, the, to, the, to the executive decisions, but there were some decisions that I would have loved to, to take on um, so that the box stops on my table. But the way it is designed now, you can, even if you did wrong badly, you can you can heap it all on the head of the governor and say, it was not your fault, but the fault of the governor. Right, <laughs> or, right. Not your fault right. as a minister, but the fault of the head of state, uh, the president. So that, that, for me, that is that is what over time needs to be done. That, that, that devol devolution of power to the point where the local government has enough powers to do what they need to do where commissioners or ministers can take full responsibility of what happens in your ministry. But when, when, when the system does not allow them to, to take certain decisions, then you can't, you can't hold them responsible for non-performance, which, which for me is, is, a, is a flaw in how mm -hmm. politics is designed right now. Do you think you'll go back to government? Uh, they, they've taught me to say, never say never, okay? Uh, my, front, my initial answers used to be no. I think I've had my time and, and I'm done. But uh, with governance and, and, and how it works with your people, uh, the way Nigerian politics is, is arranged, when you go in, you are not only represented yourself, but you are representing your, 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 your birthplace or your people, your, your ethnic group. Right. So it, it is seen like that. So it's, a, it's right. seen as a call to go represent your people, right. <laughs> you know, right. um, which, which again, sometimes is, is it's not exactly how it should be. It should be a call so. to serve your country, right. not necessarily a smaller unit. That, that, yeah, uh, you know, I believe you that. Know, or like mm -hmm. making a small, it's good for, for, for ethnic pride to say, oh, you are, you are, you, are, you are from the robo stock, which I'm very proud of, but um, a robo call to man. serve, yes, <laughs> a call to serve should be something a bit uh, more, more global so, or more humanistic than 
than at least uh, yeah, than ethnic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that's Nigerians' problem, really, if you ask me. It's just this, there's that. One, that, one of, one of, one, one of, of, one, <laughs> of the, one of the many. One major, one. Major one. <laughs> yes. yes, it is.